in in our day to day life we are confused about what is right and wrong and we have a lot of devotees and in devotee community also we are confused what is right and wrong i joined this movement 30 years back the understanding at that time was completely different even the movement has changed the organization has changed the approach of organization also had changed so what is right and what is wrong for 10 20 years today's ekadashi day ekadashi day we are not supposed to take grain you know And we used to get hundreds of questions. Can we take cucumber? Can we take the cucumber with the seed, without the seed, <laughs> seedless one, and this one? We got tired answering that. Prabhu ji, you please don't take anything. <laughs> Even if you are tired, take water. Don't trouble us with all that thing. And nowadays, all the new new grains, new new millet, black rice, brown rice, green rice, all sort. Can I take this? Can I take? Oh, it's too much, you know. So everything has changed. The view, what is right and what is wrong. Within is gone. Within devotional life, life also we are many times confused. What is right and what is wrong. in south india we have we regularly use this word called dharma sankatam but i don't know whether you use that in north use dharma sankat dharma sankat everybody uses acha okay we all are very familiar with this word but we don't know what does that mean exactly <laughs> Everybody uses. Oh, I was in a dharma. What, what happened? I missed my bus. I was in a dharma. <laughs> We don't know where to use this word. We all use. Dharma sanghat means you are stuck between two dharmas, two right, and you don't know what. In front of you, there are two right things to be done, but only one you can do. so you have to choose between that thing you know it's sometimes it's confusing which right thing i can i can follow or i can do it it is like a husband stuck between wife and mother <laughs> husbands are always in dharma sankat you know whether to follow wife or mother because scriptures are saying that you know you should always follow your mother at any cost and the other side if you reject your wife that's all you will go to hell <laughs> so dharma sankat so when somebody is stuck between two right things then it is dharma sankat Actually, this mic is very heavy. <laughs> Maybe they bought a very good quality. It is like four or five kilos. <laughs> I was wondering, okay, like go over the hill. I have to hold it. Another man, Ranju Prabhu saved me. So where did I stop? <laughs> It's always a question. Every day, even a, a, a lady, household lady, enters the kitchen every morning. What to do? Cook now. <laughs> and she goes and asks, asks her husband, "What should I? Whatever you do, all day same only. <laughs> you can name it different, but all day same. Even you know, like petty petty things, we are confused to major decisions in life. I'm getting a better job opportunity, but should I leave? Then in that case, I have to travel. You know, bigger opportunities." two the most important questions in the life at the age of 55 60 i am done i have saved enough money i don't have to work hard like those days there is enough for my security children are well settled should i 
retire and surrender to Krishna or get into spirituality. Everything is an important question. And take it down from me. 90% of the human being takes a wrong decision. And till the end they argue this is right. This con confusion is always there. So what is right and what is dharma is very important. To make the right decision, you know, is, is very important in life because when you make it at that time, you will save years and years, you know. Sometimes people take the right decision after 20 years. What is the use? You know, you are, you are, you are diagnosed with certain disease and you went and meet the doctor and the doctor gives you three medicine, you know, three pills every day. And one week you didn't take the pill. At the end of the week you take 30 pills. It's madness. So right decision at the right time is very very important hope i have confused you enough <laughs> so let us start the session you know i was reading Srimad bhagavatam first canto i think second or third shloka of Prabhupada's explanation we came across two strange words i noted down because i may forget Pilfering and bickering. How many of you read the first shloka of Bhagavatam? All have read. Have you, do you remember coming across this word in the purport? One, two, three. In between, no? That's how we read Bhagavatam. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Finish reading. And nothing enters all evaporated. <laughs> I was so surprised to see these two words, pilfering and bickering. I don't know from Prabhupada, I don't know why he put those words. Then we went to the dictionary and this and then find out what it is. Pilfering means a person even of attaining a huge post or you know well settled in life and very well established, everything is fine. Still he has the tendency to steal tiny things. Many people have got that. One famous actress, multi-billionaire, caught stealing things from a shopping mall, which is like a <laughs> peanut. Some people have got this tendency, you know, pick things, steal some things. It's called pilfering. Mm -hmm. You can relate to what I say. Many people have got this tendency. Bickering means just for no reason pick up argument and quarrel on unnecessary topics at home and it finally lands up in big tsunami. It always happens between husband and wife and they don't talk among themselves for one week and they fought for nothing. What was the topic? Narendra Modi had a dog in his house. Some strange topic they will start. Does this happen at your house? Oh, all Vaishnavas directly from my <laughs> You know, pick up some useless topic, some strange topic and they keep arguing. So, we all have some kind of a tiny demon within us. It's very important to identify that demon. Then only we will be able to judge exactly what is right and wrong and make decisions. Okay, then I'll give you one more example. Because sometimes the wrong which is very close to right is also accepted as right. A wrong deed but very close to rightness is also accepted as right. For example, somebody is asking, what is the distance between Delhi and Vrindavan? What's the distance between Delhi and Vrindavan? 
120-130 kilometers. Somebody says 50 kilometers is wrong. Somebody says 100 kilometers. Okay. Somebody says 120 kilometers. But actually it is 128 kilometers. But still we accept whoever has said 120 kilometers is okay because it's very close to right. But the same principle cannot be applied everywhere. The teacher asks a student, what is 4 plus 4? Student says 7. I'm very close to right. Will he be accepted? So who makes the decision? Which is right and which is wrong? It's very complicated. We cannot apply the same law. There is an instance in Ramayana. Lord Ramachandra was walking. Many citizens and sages came and complained to Lord Ramachandra. Prabhuji, one Shudra, he is sitting and reading Vedas. Ramachandra Bhagavan went, approached him without asking a single question, took his sword and chopped his head. Was that indeed right or wrong? Shudra was reading Vedas. Lord Ramachandra chopped him off, killed him. Was that right or wrong? Right, 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 right. 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 Because Lord did. You should give me a better answer. <laughs> Why it is right? We got salvation. Huh? We got salvation. But still, Lord Ramachandra could have given him salvation in a better way. <laughs> this is immediate. Eh? Immediate delivery. Okay. <laughs> so we will come back to that later on. If you are not a devotee, I am sure you will not say right for this. Because we are talking in a assembly of devotees and we all somewhere deeply know and we believe Whatever Lord say does will be right. That's why we all say what Lord Ramachandra did is right. Imagine we are not devotees. What answer we will give? Wrong. Right? So is it right or wrong? Very confusing. So we will come back to that later. Bhishma Dev. His entire life he was dharmic. Never spoke a lie in his life. Imagine speaking lie and all is just normal thing nowadays. You know, we all speak lies. You know. How many of us have spoken like today from morning to 8 o'clock? I don't know probably because I keep speaking. <laughs> I don't keep track of it. <laughs> but Bhishma, a personality, he didn't spoke a single lie in his entire life. He always lived for others. He never lived for himself. We all live for ourselves. Yes or no? We all live. Hundred percent we live for ourselves. And if there is little extra time, I'll go for satsang. You know, something like that. But Bhishma, he lived for 625 years. And all the 625 years, he lived for Kuru dynasty. Not a single day for himself. Lived by dharma. Lived by principle. And towards the end, what happened to him? He was lying on the bed of arrows. And a normal devotee asks a question. What wrong he did to suffer this? Sometimes devotees have some disease, some problem, unexpected, unfortunate death. So immediately devotees, all the devotees ask this question, why Prabhu Krishna did this to him? Why it is like that? Bhishma Dev lived an entire life of principle. At the end, he has to lie on the bed of arrows. Right? So what wrong he did? And Krishna, he asked the same question to Krishna and Krishna said, only one tiny answer. Krishna said, you hurted my devotee. Who's the devotee? Draupadi. 
No, but I was dharmic. I was standing by the king. No, but still you hurt him, Draupadi. Then Bhishma Dev asked, Draupadi herself was confused. She herself doesn't know what is right and wrong. During Mahabharata battle, sorry, during that uh, disrobing incident, she screamed and she took that vow, Shapat, the sky, Mother Earth, eight directions, all the planets are the witness. My husband's will tear the chest of the Shasana and Bhima will drink his blood and I will take that blood and apply on my hair the bloody shampoo they will apply it on my hair huh? she took a wow was that right or wrong? the wow Draupadi took was right or wrong? <laughs> okay. Then later at an another incident, all the five children of Draupadi were chopped into hundred pieces and they were thrown in fire. When she came, all her five children were turned into ashes and their heads were missing. Ashwatthama collected their five heads as a memento. And all the children were into ashes. Krishna himself pulled the sword to kill Ashwatthama. Draupadi said, Arjuna, my dear Lord, please forgive him. Because his mother will be crying like me. I forgive Ashwatthama. If Draupadi would have forgave, what do you say? For give to Shasan, there wouldn't be any Kurukshetra. If Draupadi would have applied the same principle years back, would there be a Kurukshetra? Because when Krishna went as a peace messenger, Balram came and told Krishna, Krishna, you are the only person who can stop the war. On one side, there are Pandavas, our relatives, and on another side, there are Kauravas, they are my dear students. Only you, I believe you, and you are the master of this universe. Only you can stop the war. Then Krishna said, My dear brother, I am I will definitely stop the war. Gave a promise, gave a word. Then Krishna walked further. Draupadi came and said, Krishna, you are not seeing my hair. I am waiting for the shampoo. So Draupati, Krishna told Draupati, don't worry, I will get to Shasna's blood. Why? If Draupati could have applied the same principle of forgiving to Shasana, which is the biggest, bigger sin, insulting ourselves or killing our children, which is the biggest sin, insulting ourselves or killing our children. But there Draupati forgave. But here she didn't. So Bhishma asked Krishna. So Draupadi herself was very confused. Draupadi doesn't know what is right and wrong. So Krishna, please explain what is right and wrong. Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha
गोविंद जय जय गोपाल जय जय राधा रमन हरि गोविंद जय जय will be tested the wrong will not be tested imagine i give you a gold coin and i give you a regular whatever whatever imitation whatever the artificial one and then i say this is gold coin and this is a artificial thing which one you will test gold. the gold coin we will test nobody is going to sit and test the art be okay whether i am going to check, make sure it is a fake one no. nobody is going to check that right so when we practice right the dharma we are always tested then a devotee keeps progressing in spiritual life maya will be constantly testing him a non devotee will not be tested adharmic person will never be tested because he is in partner with maya a dharmic person will be always tested because he is constantly tested he has the tendency to fall adharmic why i am tested all the time and that person eats meat he doesn't do any other things and there is no test so let me also be like that so which one is tested dharmic is tested and that person is very valuable so example is vidura dharmaraj you all must be knowing that story there was a sage called mandavya mandavya muni one day he was sitting and meditating couple of thieves they stole the queen's ornament the queen went to bathe in a pond and she removed the ornaments few thieves picked those ornaments and they ran and the soldiers were chasing them and the thieves got scared and they threw the ornaments inside mandavya muni's ashram and they ran away then the soldiers caught mandavya muni and brought him before the king and the king said you are a, a sage you are a rishi and why did you do this and the and mandavya muni said i didn't steal but the evidences were against him he was punished and what is that punishment they made him sit on an iron needle and the needle pierced him and he died now mandavya muni went to yamaraj dharmaraj then he questioned dharmaraj how many of you have punished or heard hurting words for those mistakes which you have not done in life how many of you got scoldings got blamed got insulted for those mistakes which we have not done in life many of us i think almost all of us <laughs> you know 
I was discussing this topic in the morning. Once, Guruji, Gurudev, scolded a disciple very badly for a mistake which he has not done. And he felt very, he felt broken, he felt very bad. Then he came and complained to another senior person, how can Guru do this? I am not party to this mistake. I know nothing about this mistake. And still why he blamed me so much, that means he is not a great person. He is also a normal person and why he blamed me so much. Then the senior devotee said, maybe this blame is for the mistake which you have done, which nobody else knew about it. You also must have done some other mistake. Nature records everything. Sometimes we are blamed for those mistakes which we have not done. But then take it as for your betterment because we have done some mistakes which others doesn't know. Nobody knew about it. Alright. So Mandavya Muni, he went to Dharmaraj and asked, how are you going to justify? Explain. I didn't do anything. Then Mandavya Muni told, when you are a five-year-old baby kid, what do you do? You catch all the butterflies and you know the grasshoppers and all the tiny, tiny insects and pluck the feathers. Oh, we all have done that, okay? We have killed the unlimited insects, all the mosquitoes, you know, everything. We have all killed them. Yes or no? Yes. How many butterflies have you killed? <laughs> How many? Bro? Lost the count? <laughs> so many butterflies. So many. Every mother is killing cockroaches and this and that. <laughs> yeah. So, the Dharmaraj said, you killed so many insects. And not only that, what you will do, like the Mrigari drama which we saw, you will take the needle and thread all the insects. My mother, when I became a veg, I was not a vegetarian by birth. When I joined ISKCON, I became vegetarian. Then I went and told my mother I became a vegetarian. She became very angry. We have eaten only chicken. But you know you have eaten cockroach and leech. She told me when I was a kid, I was crawling. There was the centipede on the wall. You know that black thing? It, it seems, I don't know. I took it and put it in my mouth. <laughs> so my mother was like, really, she got so angry. We ate only these things. You have eaten, you are like a Chinese guy. You have eaten all this. Now you became a vegetarian, you know. She was making fun. So, when you were a kid, Mandavya Muni, you needled, you thread all those insects. Then Mandavya Muni asked a question back to Dharmaraj. I did that when I was so young. I was not aware what is right and wrong. Then Dharmaraj answered, a baby goes and puts his finger inside a fire. The fire will not think, okay, the baby is just three years old, I should not burn him. The fire will burn, right? Yeah. But Bandavya Muni said, I cannot accept your answer. I curse you. You go and take birth in this material world and get stuck in between right and wrong and suffer. Then only you will know what is right. He cursed Dharmaraj himself. Bandavya Muni was so powerful. He got stuck between right and wrong. That's why I didn't marry at all. <laughs> got stuck. Then Mandavya Muni came to this world and appeared as, sorry, Dharmaraj came and appeared as right from the day one Vidura was very careful. He was never feared, never scared to speak the truth. He will always stand by the truth. And one day, Dhritarashtra, he knew his son is doing mistakes. You know, so Dhritarashtra was almost, he was ready to divide his kingdom into two. He was almost there. He was about to divide his kingdom into two. Duryodhana went and said, 
if you do this i will commit suicide and you will be the reason for my death the passionate people will blackmail like this they are rajasik if you do this i am not going to talk to you that is the end we are not going to beat each other all this rajasik and tamasik people that is how they scare you know so duryodhana went and said if you divide the kingdom i will commit suicide and you become the responsibility vidura got up and said why he has to commit suicide hey dhritarashtra send him away or kill him you do that directly he was never scared to speak the truth because this one son will uproot your entire kuru dynasty your whole dynasty will be wiped off from the face of earth why you are waiting for him to commit suicide better you kill him or you cast him to jungle when vidura said that duryodhana was so angry and vidura was sent vidura immediately the insulted vidura so badly vidura walk away from the kingdom but in entire life vidura did the right thing but he was tested when we choose the right path we will be tested again and again and again one thing you should take it in your heart never leave the association of devotees i suddenly all of a sudden i lost my job all of a sudden i am diagnosed with a strange disease all of a sudden i lost my money all of a sudden some strange thing happened in my life unexpected and this and that so many accidents will happen but what we should do we should stick on to the group of devotees that is what vidura did immediately vidura went to himalayas and took shelter of a great sage maitreya he was dharmaraj he didn't think why should i take shelter of somebody else i am the truth personified i can live the way i want no he went and took the shelter of a devotee sometimes mother nature will test us there are two kinds of ants you must have seen that ant black ants and the red ants have you seen them yes which bites you harder the red 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 yeah these two ants are very dangerous the black is so tiny and the red, sorry the red one is tiny but the both the ants are very painful okay it scientist did this experiment really he did this experiment he had a bunch of black ants a bunch of red ants inside a jar and he was dropping food every day and the ants were peacefully eating and they were loving after a week he took the jar shook the jar and kept it back within hours the ants killed themselves this is a real experiment done the scientist shook the jar and put it back and within hours the black ants bit the red ants and the red ants bit the black ants and finally all the ants were dead the black ants thought red ants are our enemy and the red one thought the other way who was the real enemy the scientist so we are all inside the jar and many times nature will shake us the karma will shake us but we keep biting each other and we'll all die like the ants so we should know exactly who is our enemy our real enemies are the results of karma which we have done in our past not the neighbor not the in-laws not the colleague not the manager our real enemy is the karmic deeds so vidura kunti and vidura had beautiful conversation kunti maharani asked my dear brother vidura the entire life i was in pain what pleasure i experienced 
I lived with my husband just for a few years and finally I became a widow with five children and I lived in my own palace like an orphan. Abhayarti. What do you say for Abhayarti in English? Refuge. I lived in my palace like a refuge. My children ate what is thrown away by Duryodhana. We were always punished. We were fed with poison. When we sleep, they put fire. Then we were thrown in jungle. Why? Problems again and again and again. Then Vidura gave a beautiful answer. He said, My dear Kunti, I don't know why problems are coming again and again. But I know one answer. What is the difference between fasting and starving? Fasting means you do that voluntarily. Starving means it's punished, pushed upon you. And both the days there is no food. On the fasting day also there is no food. Starving day also there is no food. Which day you will feel more hunger? The fasting day or the starving day? Starving. Because it's forced upon us. Fasting day we are prepared. Okay, I'm not going to eat my lunch today. But the starving day, pray, one o'clock, what happened to me? Two o'clock, what happened to me? Three o'clock, what happened to me? You know? It's forced, then the pain will be more. Anyway, next 12 years you are going to jungle. Think it is a decision made by you and you are going for tapas. Then your pain will be reduced. Same principle Vidura applied. For he didn't do any mistake, but he was thrown away from the kingdom. Anyway, Vidura, Duryodhana will throw me away. So just before that, he resigned and left. You know, it's a prestigious thing. Anyway, tomorrow he's going to kick me out. Today I will resign and go. So Vidura happily resigned. He went to Himalayas, took shelter of Maitreya. If something goes wrong in life, if you are confused, the best solution, surrender to Krishna. If everything goes good in life, the best solution, surrender to Krishna. Either way, that is the solution. Vidura went and surrendered to Maitreya and enjoying the time spiritually. Having pilgrimage, going to places and chanting, taking prasad, hearing about Krishna. He was so happy. And at one point Vidura got an information. Pandavas won the battle. Vidura became very happy. But Duryodhana, sorry, Dhritarashtra is still living with Pandavas. Dhritarashtra lost his hundred children. Am I boring you? No. Feeling sleepy? No. Need some yoga session? <laughs> yes? So, Duryodhana lost his hundred children. Sorry, Dhritarashtra. His hundred children were killed right in front of his eyes. But he forgot everything. And very happily staying with Pandavas because Pandavas were taking care of Duryodhana Trashtra so nice. Just for that reason, Vidura came back from Himalayas. And he came and said, My dear brother, what are you doing? Are you happy? Are you comfortable? Then he said, I am very comfort comfortable. You know, Yudhishthira, he is taking care so nicely, better than my own son. You know, I am, they have built a separate palace for me. This is like that. This is like that. Blah, 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 blah. Vidura heard everything and said, hell with you. You are like a dog licking the bone thrown away by Bhima. Heavy words he used. Somebody has thrown out something and you are licking that bone. Very heavy words Bhima, Vidura used. Why? Just to pull him. It is explained by Ashtavakra Muni. If a man crosses, I, I am sure you won't be like, liking this statement. Should I say or not? Very painful statement. Should I say or not? Yeah. Once we cross 50, 60, and if somebody asks you a question, how are you? The answer should never be, I am fine. If you are fine, that means it's rebirth, is guaranteed. 
if you are not fine, I have health problem, I have this problem, I don't know, my children, I am living with them, daughter-in-law is not so happy, so better surrendering to Krishna and chanting Hare Krishna, that's the best answer. If somebody, I have enough security, my insurance, my bank balance, I am fine, I have two houses, Mumbai and Delhi, I am shifting. And very, very good. Hell with you. Get prepared for the next Janama and we don't know what will become. So Ashtavakra Muni said, the nature should give you problem in the form of disease and restlessness. If the nature doesn't give, you voluntarily become restless. How? I am not fasting, eating this day. I am fasting three days in a week. I am doing this tapasya, going to Vrindavan, Karthik month, no eating, only one meal a day. And voluntarily take tapasya. Otherwise, some disease will fall upon your head. And doctor will say, don't eat. Better you make the decision yourself. I am not eating this day, that day. That is what sages do. Why they voluntarily do tapasya? Why can't they meditate on Krishna eating food? Why they have to starve and meditate on Krishna? You read Bhagavatam, you read Ramayana, you read all the Puranas, sages go to jungle, they don't eat anything for weeks together and meditate on God. Why you have to do that? You can happily eat and meditate. What's wrong? Why can't you eat and meditate? Why? They voluntarily take tapasya so that material nature will not put troubles on them. If you don't voluntarily take tapasya after 15, nature will put. I am sure nobody has touched 50 years, so you can be happy. You know, everybody is in their teens. And, right? So, Vidura, he came back just for that purpose. And he spoke so rudely, so penetrating. He said, you are living like a slave. You are living like a beggar. Then, next day morning, Arjuna came running and told Yudhishthira, Dhritarashtra is missing. Gandhari is missing. Then Yudhishthira asked, what happened to Uncle Vidra? He is also missing. What happened to our mother Kunti? She is also missing. Overnight, Vidura preached like we are also going preaching for 20 years, not change at all. <laughs> One night Vidura preached. One night he spoke. Next day morning, all the four disappeared. But why Kunti also have to follow? Because when Pandu was about to die, Pandu said, my dear wife, you take the shelter of my big brother. So when big brother is going to jungle and now Kunti knew he is going back to Godhead. He is going to go to God. So immediately Kunti didn't think, okay, now all my sons are the emperors. Let me, anyway, entire life I was suffering. Now let me take rest, live with them in Hastinapur, happily enjoy the riches of life. She didn't think these people who tortured me are going back to Godhead. Let that pathway be full of thorns and pebbles. Because that pathway is leading to God, I will take that pathway. But the other side, there is another smooth, beautiful pathway. But that is material word taking us to Punar Janma. Which road we should choose? Theoretically at least. Which road we should choose? The thorns and the pebble, the road to God. So Kunti decided, let me follow. And she will. Then immediately Bhima and Arjuna, they're elderly people. You know, they need some support. Why don't we send servants? Let us go and look out for them and this and that. Then Yudhishthira said, remain calm. Renunciation should be done unannounced. You got this point? Yes. Tyaga. Renunciation should be done and unannounced. It is not like that. Tomorrow I am going to take sannyas. Today is the last day. You can feed me whatever you want. You can give me whatever. You know, that's not like that. Tyaga should be done without informing. That includes donations to temple also. You know, 
we give donation and put a big board and donated by so and so mr kulkarni and his wife and children and the children who are going to take birth in after 10 years all the pra parampara ka naam you know sometimes we do that so it should be done unannounced same principle even yudhishthira followed one day yudhishthira was sitting there and bhima was sitting next to him and yudhishthira opened his heart and said they have just ruled 36 years after all this battle after all the suffering they became emperor yudhishthira became emperor and just 36 years got over so one day he told bhima i don't know i didn't sleep for 3 days bhima said even for me the same situation i had all kinds of dreams there was tears and blood from as rain from the sky the plant trees and all were uprooted there was storm this thing what he said tornado cyclone and this and that i saw so many widow ladies i saw babies crying with blood as tears and i don't know what is all this bad woman and both the brothers were discussing at the time arjuna came running like wild person beating on his head and chest and screaming and yudhishthira asked what happened and arjuna said krishna left the planet krishna has gone back he has left the planet yudhishthira just heard this word he didn't speak anything to anybody he called parikshit and parikshit was just a young boy 10 to 12 year old young boy took his crown put it on parikshit's head and just walked away towards northern direction and bhima and arjuna knew what yudhishthira is going to do because when you go on the final renunciation when you do that tyaga it should be uninformed bhima followed arjuna followed nakula followed sahadev followed then draupadi followed everybody followed the same thing happened in ramayan when lord ramachandra walked into sarayu all bharata ayodhya vasis including birds and bees and everyone in ayodhya they all followed Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare
So, <laughs> Yudhishthira once asked Vidura, this dharma is quite confusing. We don't even know what is right and wrong. Because I, I gave the same example in the morning also. When Arjuna got this Gandiva, he got this Gandiva from Vana, Gandiva Chakra. The moment Arjuna got this Gandiva, it has got special powers. Not a single arrow will go waste from Gandiva. You can use the arrows, it will go hit the person, kill him and go to Ganga, wash clean and come back and sit in the bed. What a first recycling program. <laughs> you know, powerful Gandiva. Not a single arrow will go waste and not a single arrow will miss the goal and the queer will never be empty. How do you pronounce it? It's queer? Correct? Queer. Queer. <laughs> so that will never go empty. So the moment Arjuna got this Gandiva, he screamed, lifted it up in the sky and screamed, now I have got this special weapon. I will punish each and every single Kamrava. I will show Duryodhana who I am. I'm going to punish. Then immediately Krishna said, Arjuna, don't be mad. This is not for punishing somebody. You should know what is dharma. Dharayati iti dharma, the one which holds everything. That's why Mother Earth has got this name Dharani. Because she holds everything. She holds a deva, he holds, she holds a rakshasa, she holds dhanava, daitya. She holds everybody. She is equal to everyone. That is dharma. You should not use this weapon to punish someone. If you have got something, a blessings which others don't have, it should bring humility. You should use that skill for the betterment of others. Don't do that. Same Krishna after a few years, he said, Hey, Gandhi Vudari, use this weapon and go and kill them. So it was so quite confused. First Krishna said, don't use this and punish others. Then Krishna said, use this and kill others. So Yudhishthira asked Vidura, what is right and what is wrong? So confusing. And we gave the same example in the morning also. It happens in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. In the first chapter, Arjuna is kept on saying, I will not fight, I will not fight, I will not fight. Krishna kept on saying, kill all your relatives, kill all your relatives and all that. He said, how can I kill them? Bhishma Dev is my teacher, my relative, my adorable uncle, great-grandfather. I was holding his finger and learning how to walk on this planet. How will I fight against Bhishma? How will I fight against Dronacharya? He's my spiritual master. How will I fight against Kripa? How will I fight against my own brothers, nephews? And How will I do that? I'm not going to fight. And if I fight, I'm going to incur sin. Then Krishna said, you can kill five people. Who are those five people? The man who steals your wife. The man who sets fire to your house. The man who feeds poison. The other two I forgot. Deadly weapons. Plunders the weapons. Plunders the weapons. You can kill all these five people. And Arjuna, Duryodhana had did all the five things against you. Not one. So you can kill him. What a beautiful answer Arjuna gave Krishna. That is Artha Shastra. In Dharma Shastra, you should forgive that man who is going to kill you. Who is coming in the intention of. That is much more higher. You are speaking Artha Shastra Krishna. But in Dharma Shastra, you should forgive. That is the rightest thing. I am ready to forgive them. Then Krishna said, you stupid fool number one. <laughs> it's a duty of a Kshatriya to fight. Because you are not fighting for yourself. You are fighting for the kingdom. For your people. For the people who are depending on you. So don't be selfish. Fight for all of them. 
then Arjuna said, Krishna, I kill them. They will all die in the battlefield. And they will go to Veeraswarka. There is a planet, it seems, called Veeraswarka. All the soldiers who die in the battlefield, not those people in the border who are dying in India, Pakistan, who are not those people, <laughs> dying for dharma. All the soldiers will go to Veeraswarka, a special planet. They die in this battle. They will all attain heaven. I will do sin, commit sin and will go to hell. I am not going to fight. Then suddenly Arjuna got an idea. Krishna, sin will never touch you, no? Krishna said, no sin can touch me. Then why don't you kill them? It's much more easier. Then Krishna said, I have vowed that I will not take weapons. I will never touch a weapon in this battle. Then Arjuna asked, how did you kill Putana? Which, which, which weapon you used to kill Putana? Chakra, Sura, Aga, Sura, which weapon you used? You don't need any weapon. No, I am not going to take part in this battle. Then what you see? In Rama Avatar, Lord Ramachandra killed Ravana. Ravana came to kidnap his wife. That was Ravana Krishna. This is Bhishma. How can they kill Bhishma? They are not equal. Arjuna Krishna could not give a satisfying answer to Arjuna. Dharma is quite confusing. Finally, Krishna said, Obey my order, kill him. Arjuna said, Thank you very much. <laughs> That's all. So Vidura said, Dharma means simply following Krishna. That is all. Because if you get inside the track of right and wrong, it is never ending. Dharma to Sakshat Bhagavad Pranitham. What is Dharma? Pleasing Bhagavan is Dharma. That is what Veda says. If you get into the argument of what is right and what is wrong, it goes on and on and on. Dharma to Sakshat Bhagavat Praditam. Pleasing Bhagavan is Dharma. Samshiddir Haritoshanam. The total principle, ultimate cause, ultimate goal of my life is to please Hari. If I have done that, even though there are mistakes in life, it is okay. Right? So Draupati forgave Ashwatthama. She didn't forgive Duryodhana and Dushasana. Krishna knew very well she is confused. She is adharmic. Still Krishna stood with Draupati. So when a devotee is confused between right and wrong, and he simply surrenders to Krishna, even though the devotee is committing some mistakes, Krishna will correct it. You want the answer? If a person who is not a devotee always lives by principle like Mandavya Muni, a tiny mistake in his life, he will be made to sit on the needle. So, which is the better way? Become a devotee or always a, I have never cheated anybody in my life. I have never spoken a lie. I have always helped people who have come to me. I am a man of principle. I am Mr. So and so. Are you chanting? No, I am not chanting. Go to hell. <laughs> right? If somebody surrenders to Krishna, even though there are small, small mistakes in his life, Krishna just forgives him. Clears it off. Right? Beautifully explained by Bhagra. When the battle was getting closer and closer and closer, somehow Balaram was unhappy. Why? Balaram knew that something is going on. Once somebody asked Prabhupada this question, what is the difference between Krishna and Balaram? Prabhupada said, one is black and one is white. <laughs> there is no much difference. One is the Lord who accepts Seva. Another one is the Lord who renders Seva. Sevaka Bhagavan, Sevya Bhagavan. You know. So Balara went and approached Krishna and said, Krishna, you knew everything. You know what is going to happen. You know the future. You know what is right. You know what is wrong. Why can't you solve this? Do you think war is the only solution for this problem? Can't you solve without a war? And you know very well how many thousands and thousands of people are going to die. How many queens are going to become widow? How many children are going to become orphans? There will be chaos and calamity. 
Why don't you solve this? Then Balram said, Krishna said, what you say is right, my dear brother. Somehow I will stop this war. Balram said, I know very well whatever you desire is going to happen. You are not going to stop the war. You are going to make Arjuna the emperor. I know that very well. Because Balram declared this. That's a beautiful story. Balram went and told Krishna, this Arjuna, your friend, he is hanging behind our sister Shubhadra, which is not right. <laughs> Why don't you advise him, you know, like that? Krishna, is it so? I never knew about her. <laughs> Arjuna, how dare, you know, is behind our sister. Today, I will, I will warn him. Arjuna, Krishna went and told Arjuna, our brother has found out. Better you kidnap my sister and run. as fast as possible. What a wonderful brother. <laughs> kidnap our sister and run. And gave an idea how to kidnap. Whatever way you approach Balaram, there is no energy in this whole 14 planetary system which can stop our brother Balaram. Balaram is Adishesh, Anantanag, he is the energy, he is Sankarshana. No, no, buddy, no person can stop him. So what you should do, you should come and address of a sannyasi. It started during Mahabharata. <laughs> you come in the dress of a sannyasi. So Arjuna came in the dress of a sannyasi. Immediately Balram went and bowed. See, the Supreme Lord respects this dress. Only those people who are wearing this are not respecting this. <laughs> Krishna, Balram respected, received Arjuna. And he wanted to put the best person in the service. And Shubhadra, he thought Shubhadra is the best person. And Shubhadra started serving Arjuna. She thought he is a sadhu. But she has served so many sadhus in life. Whenever I serve a sadhu, detachment. That is why we should serve a sadhu. When you serve a sadhu, automatically detachment arises in the heart. But Shubhadra is wondering, this is happening something opposite. When they are serving this sage, attachment is coming. Slowly she realized, this is Arjuna and she also fell in love. Within all happened within two weeks. Then Krishna said, time is ready to take my sister and run away. Then all of a sudden, one day morning, Shubhadra is missing, Arjuna is missing. Balram came to know, this is Arjuna. Balram was furious. His eyes had all turned red. He was screaming. He said, Satyaki and all the Yadu armies, the soldiers, the powerful warriors, come on, assemble our army. Let us go march against Pandavas and let us show who we are. And now Krishna is keeping me very silent. <laughs> Krishna is not speaking the whole one single way. He's the master man. He planned everything. Keeping quiet like that. Then suddenly Balram raised Krishna. Krishna, why are you not speaking? Then Krishna said, can I speak, my dear brother? Yes. Actually, Arjuna wanted to come and ask the hand of our sister. Because you are the elder brother. He was feeling a little shy to come and ask. Maybe that's why he kidnapped him. What an answer Krishna has given. Balram understood it's all plan of Krishna. But still, Satyaki and all the other soldiers and warriors are screaming what he thought himself of. We will show and this and that. And suddenly, Balram got up, banged his hand on the floor and said, You stupid Vrishnis and Yadus, keep quiet. Now I realize it is the plan of Krishna. If Krishna had decided, all the 14 planetary system, 33 crores of Devi Devatas, the things which move and immovable, everyone should obey. And I obey the plan of Krishna and he walked back. What a level of understanding. Balram didn't like the whole battle at all. He was feeling, because Duryodhana was his dear student, even, so he was feeling little sympathy. Then when Balram came back, the war is almost over. So they decided, let us have personal combat. Bhima and Duryodhana. Because the whole army is dead. Still the king is alive, Duryodhana is alive. So somebody has to die. So they decided, let us have personal fight. 
So Duryodhana selected, I will fight with Bhima because Arjuna is younger to me. And Krishna is a cowherd boy, I don't want to fight with cowherd boy. I will fight with Bhima, he is equal to me. Then, at the wrong time, Balram came. So all of them unanimously said, Balaram be the referee. So Balaram became the referee. One said Duryodhana, another said Bhima. Actually, Bhima is powerful. Duryodhana is very skillful. So who had the upper hand in the fight? Duryodhana. Okay, you people are listening. <laughs> so Duryodhana had the upper hand. Bhima was like, you know, like a bull. He was fighting and all, with all force. But Duryodhana was very tactical. He was very skillfully moving and he had the upper hand. Then Arjuna told Krishna what to do. Looks like Duryodhana will win. I know this is a mad bison. He can never win. <laughs> because so powerful and he is angry also. When you are angry, you can't think properly. But Duryodhana is very calm and taking nice moves and all. Then immediately Krishna picked one small twig, stick, you know, and show where to break it. He showed his thighs, which is against the rule of that. And Balram saw Krishna doing that. <laughs> Krishna was like, <laughs> because Balram knew Krishna so well, Krishna so showed the thigh and broke the twig. Means you hit on the thighs, something like that. So immediately Bhima started hitting and break the, broke the thighs. Then Balram got up, took his mace so angry, and he went to hit Bhima. He said, You cheater! You are going against the rule of a battle. You went against, now you face my maze. He took his maze and went to him. And the stupid Bhima, also out of anger, he took his maze. And Krishna said, Bhima, drop it down. Stop it. Then Krishna went and told, Dear brother, see they have suffered for 12 years. What is wrong in hitting on the time? Is it equivalent to suffering? Then Balram said, I know you have decided. Why are you simply making fun of me, putting me as a referee? What is the use of me being referee? Then Bhima Duryodhana was withering in pain and lying on the ground. Bhima went, Balram went and very compassionately Balram said, Duryodhana, I have repeatedly told you again and again, to surrender to Krishna. He is the master. He is the supreme lord. He is the lord of 14 planetary systems. He is my lord. He is Brahma's lord. Simply surrender to him. Even now it is not late. If you don't surrender, you face the destiny. And Balram walked back. That is Dharma. Simply to surrender to Krishna is Dharma. Otherwise, the entire world, we, the life we will be discussing between what is right and what is wrong. Sometimes wrong will look like right, the right will look like wrong and it's very confusing because it was even confusing to Dharmaraj. So, the last thing is that Dharma, you know, that right is finally packed inside the holy name that is why holy name is called Kali Yuga Dharma. So anybody who chants the holy name sincerely, he practices Dharma. If he doesn't chant and does anything else in this world, he is Adharmic. Is that clear? I do this charity, I do that charity, I am doing this, I am doing that. I'm, but I am not chanting Hare Krishna, means he is Adharmic. Because that Dharma himself has taken shelter of the holy name in Kali Yuga. That's why holy name is called Kali Yuga Dharma. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So anybody has got questions, we can take a couple of questions. And uh, tomorrow we are continuing with... Um, some lessons from the women personalities of Bhagavatam and all the Vedas. Tomorrow we are going to speak about women. So all the Mandajis don't miss the class.
Tomorrow we are going to speak about women, so Prabhuji, you should never miss the class. <laughs> yes, Prabhuji. Oh, you're still there. <laughs> okay. How was that justified? Okay. So Prabhuji gave an answer, he got liberation, which is also true. It is like Shudra in those days, now Shudra, Vaishya, the explanation and the definition is different. In those days, who is a, who is a Shudra? A man who can't decide by himself. If he makes a decision, he will make always make a wrong decision. A man who needs a constant guidance and support, he is a Shudra. And in those days, in those ages, people were doing an offering called Ashwamedha Gavalamba. Ashwamedha means throwing the horse inside the fire sacrifice. Gavalamba means throwing cows inside the fire sacrifice. Only a perfect person can do that. Before doing that, he will liberate that jiva. He has the strength. He has the power to liberate that horse, liberate that cow. Then the body alone is offered in sacrifice. Like when we die, we are thrown inside fire. But in that time, there are unqualified people. They pick up this from Vedas. Oh, I can't do Ashwamedha because they want to eat the cow's flesh and all that. So for that sake, they were doing that. So it is like somebody going and asking the king. The weapon is for the benefit of the country. Why are you giving the weapon only to the soldiers? Give it to me also. And what the king will say? No, I'm not giving it to you. Because you will fight with your neighbor and you will kill him. So the weapon is for the benefit of the country, but I'm going to give it to the qualified person. Vedas are for the benefit of the society, so it should be given to the person who can use it rightly. But this Shudra was demoniac. He is going to pick all the unwanted things and he is definitely going to use it and this thing. And Lord Ramachandra chopped him off. It was a lesson for the whole world. On the other hand, he got killed by Lord Ramachandra, so he got liberated. Oh. Yeah, yeah,